And so here we have a few photos of, uh, <coughs> I don't know what's going on with my voice. If, it, if this is the way it's going, it's gonna be a hard week. Sorry about that. Um, but we've got some photos from the, uh, our workshop in North Carolina hosted by the US Environmental Protection Agency and Jim and Seth, who you've met, um, were really key for helping organize that and lead a lot of the discussions there. And so we really want to build on this and taking the inspiration that we heard about the Zamorano setting and, <clears throat> and their motivation for teaching and learning by doing and the, the beautiful environment that we're in, we want to build on what we, we talked about then um, in North Carolina. So to, for the, those of you who weren't in North Carolina, <clears throat> Um, the, the agenda, the main topics of the agenda were included quality assurance and calibration of the equipment. We saw the setup at EPA and, and their, their whole quality assurance plan um, for ensuring quality results and reliable results. We talked about emissions measurements and calculations, primarily in the lab, but with some application to the field. Um, there were some protocol collaborations that were started, particularly on charcoal and since then that's grown and developed and hopefully that can continue as well. There was a, a Research Triangle Park communique um, which was a document that was prepared and signed by many of the uh, participants on areas of collaboration that people agreed to contribute to and that has been demonstrated over the year and we're going to continue that here. And then of course we had the parking lot which we have captured online and we'll continue to use this community resource, this URL at the bottom. Um, and the parking lot, as Tim described, was the topics that we didn't have time to cover in the agenda. And some of them we were able to fit into the agenda during that week and some of them we want to try to address now. Um, and then, and as we are each in our home countries, we can try to address some of those topics as well. Um, and one thing, so we have, we have paper somewhere, so we'll, we can get that ready when we get into the rest of the agenda. But that's that's something that we'll we'll try to keep in mind uh, that we have a limited time this week, so we want to really focus on a limited set of things. But we understand that there are a lot more things that that need to be covered. Um, so, and and I also want to reiterate the invitation to all of you guys that this is a, a chance for everyone to participate. Everyone is a contributor and a learner here. And so if there are particular issues or questions and topics that you would like to raise or presentations that you have on some work that you're doing, let us know and we can find a way to, to work that into the agenda as well. Oh. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to walk through a couple of the key things on the, um, on the parking lot from last time. And I won't be making all of these slides available, and a lot of this is on the communities page online as well. Um, one of the key issues on the parking lot from North Carolina was improving or developing consistent methodology between the testing centers. And so during that week, uh, there were some discussions around testing, particularly charcoal stoves, um, some other specific stove types have been discussed over the past year. <clears throat> and then what we would like to do this week as well as <clears throat> to talk about round robin testing and planning for that. And this would be a way to make sure that we do have consistent methodology <clears throat> and that we're getting consistent results and that all the different testing centers also have <clears throat> tools to make sure that they can do these checks and troubleshooting on their results. <clears throat> so we'll have discussion later this afternoon on this. Another component of the uh, parking lot was on how-tos, guidelines, rules of thumb, uh, related to testing and quality assurance. So la last time in January, there was a checklist that was developed um, <clears throat> Uh, and some of the remaining issues were about um, calibration, how often does it need to be done, um, in, at what points, and so we kind of left this on the table that everyone would go back, try out the checklist that was developed, and then 
reconvene to discuss. And so we will have time today to discuss that, um, as well as uh, further issues related to quality assurance and calibration building on the, uh, the discussions in North Carolina. And so <clears throat> I've, I've been forgetting to pause, but I do want to make sure we have time to help with translation for, for people that need it. Um, and if you have any, uh, for, for people whose English isn't as good, if you have any questions, um, please ask your colleagues uh, to maybe help fill in some of the gaps if, if that's needed. There was also some a discussion, uh, people were interested in talking about standards and indicators, and I want to point out that there is a, a separate process for, separate but related process for developing standards, and um, hopefully all of you can participate through the ISO, the International Standards Organization process, um, but we will also be having additional uh, webinars and and meetings to discuss more broadly um, some of the topics and issues that are discussed. Uh, mm -hmm. For the, these ISO meetings, are there some kind of like teleconferencing that uh, to participate in being? I thought I saw some that, that had been done in the past. Yeah, um, so the way the participation happens is in each country there are committees that form to talk about the status of standards in their country. Um, and then representatives from those national committees come together at the international level to discuss um, the broader strategy of what areas need standards development as well as forming specific working groups on specific topic areas within that. And so there are lots of opportunities for different people to participate at the, at the national level, at the international level, at the working group level where a lot of the technical discussions will happen. Um, yes, yeah, so for the, the, um, for the meeting in Nairobi, um, there won't be teleconference, but we'll, there will be notes and records of that meeting that will be published, um, but just the challenges of having an international meeting and then having people Skype in is challenging. Um, so any other questions? Okay, so there were some other questions related more to, to research issues, some of them related to firepower and feed rate, how do you figure out the optimum or what users are likely to do. Um, there is discussion of carbon balance and total capture methods and comparing them. Um, so the, the space that we made in the agenda for this week is these issues may come up as part of the round robin testing plan discussion, um, or they could come up on Saturday. Thank you. <laughs> now that my voice seems to be warmed up. Um, on Saturday, we'll have some talk on uncertainty in the testing and how do we evaluate that uncertainty, what level of uncertainty is appropriate or not. Um, so we have some time on Saturday to discuss that. Another topic on the parking lot, maintaining quality and independence of testing centers. And so this is a broader issue. Pretty much everything is going to touch on this. But we do want to talk on Saturday as well. It was originally scheduled for today, but we moved it to Saturday. Um, developing the relationships with clients. Um, and one of the challenges people raised was um, customers wanting to influence the results. And so one of the issues that we could uh, talk about on Saturday is the uh, how do you manage the relationships with clients in bringing in new clients, um, making people aware of the services that the different testing centers have to offer, and then also making sure that <clears throat> your results are uh, high quality and reliable as well. And then for this week we also had some new topics. Um, so we put on the agenda uh, a little bit more time focused on field testing, more of the connection with the users. Uh, we've got time for data management. And <clears throat> being in Honduras, we also wanted to make sure that there was time for um, 
a site visit to visit some villages where Proyecto Mirador, who's working in the, in the country, they've got a, a few projects going on. And one of the cool things that they're doing is actually related to data collection and managing that information about the households that they're working with, as well as some of the follow-up. Um, so that'll be um, hopefully a cool visit for us on Friday. And then on Saturday as well, we have some time to talk about plancha testing and uh, testing chimney stoves as well. So that's the uh, agenda for the week. Um, any questions about the agenda or any proposals for new topics? Yes. Shall we discuss at some point uh, testing versus certification? Are they going to be same or are they going to be different? I mean, as can, I can give an example of India. Uh, we have a well-defined certification process from the government. So in my opinion, uh, for us, it will be better to follow that because that will have a greater value than just I as a RTKC issuing a certificate. I can definitely test many more and much more uh, uh, number of stores or things like that. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to certification, the value lies with the government certification. Mm -hmm. So something those Yeah, I think issues. that's an important issue. I think in every situation, it might be a different balance with the type of testing that needs to be done for that region. Different countries are at different stages of the process. So I think that maybe on Saturday we can make room when we're talking about why we're doing testing and who are our clients, who is our audience that we consider also testing for certification for governments as a client. We have, a, we have some place in the agenda for present uh, results coming from labs. Uh, by example, uh, we're working together with Sensico and we have results from Bolivia and Peru in one presentation. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we can talk. Well, we talked yesterday a little yeah. bit about this, so I think it sounds like it would fit quite well with some of the questions related to the uncertainty in the measurements. Is that yeah, right? Quality control and quality. And okay. Yeah. And okay. Okay, so that's, that's just a preview of the week, um, and then we'll, we should get into some of the more fun things. So you'll see in the agenda that um, <clears throat> we had a plan for an overview of Zamorano facilities, and then we have a discussion on quality assurance. And so what we've done to handle the logistics of, the, of us being here, and then the, t the lab is maybe a 10 minute walk away, we, uh, we adjusted some of that. So what we're going to do before the break is have a bit of a discussion on quality assurance and then that will continue into the afternoon as well with a few, uh, with a presentation from Jim on some new ideas related to this. And I, I, I heard from a lot of the participants that there were some topics and issues related to this that you'd like to raise. So we'll continue the, the quality assurance thing right now and then in the afternoon. And then what we'll do after the break is hear from Tim. He'll give you a, a better sense of a preview of the facilities um, at Zamorano. And then we'll, we'll head over to, to take a look. <laughs>